and the whole night. So your latest team news over the Watford game, please. I haven't seen everybody because some players are coming back today, some even tomorrow, like Alexis Sanchez. Uh, the minor problem we have is with Seat Kolasinac, we'll check him today with a hip problem. And uh, overall, uh, we lost Mustafi for about four to six weeks. I don't think he will be available before the international break, next international break. and. Uh, uh, Ozil and uh, Welbeck are back in the group in normal training. So Ozil and Welbeck could be considered for Saturday? Yeah. I'm sure you would have followed how your, your players got on, on international duty. How, how do you sum it up? Some positives there, some negatives as well? Yeah, exactly. Some people came back uh, like uh, in countries, for example in Africa, Iwobi and uh, Mohamed El Neni qualified for Nigeria and Egypt and uh, in Europe uh, some are in between, like uh, Switzerland, you know, they have to play playoffs. Uh, some are directly qualified, like uh, France, England. And uh, there's well some, disappoint some players disappointed, like Sanchez with Chile or Anne Ramsey with Wales. So it's mixed, mixed feeling, but overall, I would say number wise, uh, with Germany qualifying as well, it's quite more people uh, are in a positive mood. Finally, from me, Callum Chambers has signed a new contract with the club. Just how pleased are you to, to keep him here at Arsenal? He's a young centre back, and uh, you know that uh, he's going towards his best period now. He has a year, played a year, complete season in Middlesbrough, and unfortunately, at the moment, he's injured. But uh, I believe it's important that we keep our young centre backs because they blossom at 24. and. Uh, so it's important to keep them uh, during that period. Arsenal, it's bad news about Mustafi. Um, will Koscielny be able to take his place at Watford? Uh, Koscielny uh, has a definite, definite final test tomorrow. At the moment, he's not available. But uh, he trained on his own, and the first signs are positive, so we decided to give him a test tomorrow. You mentioned that Sir Sanchez is coming back. What are your concerns about his mental state after going out of the World Cup that way? I will have to speak to him, you know, because I'm more concerned about uh, yesterday afternoon I watched the whole game, uh, Brazil against Chile, to see how uh, difficult was the game. And, uh, and I must say he got some special treatment in this game. And it was a very physical game. And, uh, Mentally, I, I I will have to assess the situation when he comes back tomorrow. Is he ever going to speak to a spinner again? <laughs> yes, I, do, I don't think that uh, that will be a problem. But of course, it happens sometimes, the coincidence of the competitions. I mean, looking longer term, though, you don't think that without the World Cup, it takes away some of his motivation for the coming season in his last few months with Arsenal? I don't think so. I believe that... Uh, he, he, him, uh, like Aaron Ramsey, they are winners. They want uh, uh, to focus on uh, on winning things. And uh, overall, I believe that uh, the World Cup is as well as stimulant. I don't deny that. But uh, when you don't have it, you focus on your club and what you can achieve with the club. Meza Ersel's agents making encouraging noises about a new contract. He says talks are going well and that Ozil wants to stay in the Premier League two or three more years. Is that your understanding? That's my understanding, yes. Uh, I always said that the fact that we didn't find an agreement last year doesn't mean that the player will necessarily leave. Because both players look uh, happy here. And uh, uh, overall, I hope uh, that uh, the situation can be turned around. So is the deal any closer at all? At the moment, uh, no, we are not uh, are not close enough to uh, announce you anything. You've been talking too about Jack Wilshire in the international break mm -hmm. and talking about what a key period this is for him. England have qualified for the World Cup, but yeah. to get there, does he have to leave Arsenal really in January? To, to get I there? don't think so. Uh, I believe that Jack uh, at the moment is uh, in the best form I've seen him for a long time. He's very close now to be considered like anybody else, and uh, overall, uh, I believe uh, he doesn't necessarily have to leave Arsenal <coughs> to go to the World Cup. I think uh, 
if he keeps going like he's going at the moment, he will go to the World Cup, I'm sure, because I don't see Jack being fully fit and not going to the World Cup. You're really going to give him the games, though? You're really giving him the games, do you think? I think uh, he played games already for us, you know, since the start of the season, and he will play many more. Just one last one from me. Let's talk about Sir Mark Overmars coming back to Arsenal in some capacity. Is, is that true? No, at the moment he's uh, directed uh, Ajax. We have always been uh, in touch, yes, but at the moment, no. So him coming back as a director of football here is something is, which isn't going to happen? You no, approve of. not at the moment, no. Um, regards to Watford this weekend, do you think they're <coughs> a better case than they have been for a long time? Yeah, they are a strong side. I must say, uh, they have strong results. Uh, a balanced team who is dangerous, plays good football, and uh, it is a tough opponent for everybody. Do you have concerns regarding defensively how you're going to line up for this, especially if if Koscielny can't fill in and you've got Chambers on? Yes, the I have. Yeah. And I think about uh, sorting out uh, the problem, but uh, uh, overall. Uh, I will decide completely tomorrow what I do because uh, Kosieni will have a test tomorrow. He worked quite hard physically. It looks like if he survives uh, with the test, he uh, is capable to play. You know, he has no pain on his Achilles tendon. He can play, but I will decide that tomorrow. Re regarding Mustafi, do you think the timing in some ways could have been worse because of the fixtures and the way that October is looking? You could perhaps get him back. Look, uh, it's always difficult uh, to predict the situation because the, the player I expected the least to lose during the break was Mustafi. Because first of all, I was not sure we would play. And uh, secondly, Germany was already qualified, so you didn't expect uh, 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 him to be out injured because the games would be less intense. And he didn't play in the first game and we lost him in the second game against Azerbaijan uh, at home, you know. so but. Uh, we have to cope with that now. You've lost key players, Man United, Liverpool, lots of other clubs have lost key players during yes. this international break. Is it time to look at when qualifiers uh, uh, take place? So maybe if you move the season and condensed it, qualifiers could take place in one batch in the summer, then you wouldn't lose your players to injury? Yes. You would still lose players maybe at the start of the season after, but uh, it would make more sense uh, certainly to uh, regroup the competitions and uh, during one period and uh, I think uh, at the moment the, the league, the big leagues look a bit stop and start you know uh, and uh, it interrupts the flow of a competition and uh, it's always difficult as well because when the players go to the national team they are under huge pressure because the, the pride of our country is at stake and for, to get them back and immediately refocus on the, on the targets of the club is always difficult. You said before you thought Jack Wilshere will go to the World Cup um, without wishing I to wish he goes to the World Cup. Do you think you're going to need him at the World Cup? Of course. Do you think we have any player like him at the moment that can make England more exciting and open up defences? Uh, Jack uh, is certainly one of the players who has, uh, who has that more than uh, anybody else. We have plenty of good players, but he's maybe more the number 10 uh, than any other player, yes. He can open spaces, can play in, sh in tight areas, can get out of tight areas as well. Finally, one quick one for you. Uh, Paul Merson's coming back into football. Is he playing in the Welsh third? Well, I, we speak about prof professional football here. <laughs> Could I ask you about Christmas Eve football and potential you could be playing Liverpool? What's your thoughts on that? Sorry? Christmas Eve football, you could be playing Liverpool if Sky moved their game. Would you be happy yeah, to I, I look, uh, I know that uh, we have to adapt to the schedule uh, dictated by the televisions, but uh, overall I would say if that happens, I'm per personally, I think it should not, uh, not any game should be played after two o'clock latest on uh, Christmas Day, on the 24th, because Christmas Day in England is 25, but uh, <laughs> on the 24, I would say if we have to play, we should not play after two o'clock. Could I ask you about the job Marco Silva's done since he's come to England? What have you made of, 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 of it? Yes, impressed, 
because uh, uh, I think Watford plays good football. Yes, there was it all. We had a very good start as well, and overall, I think he has done very well. BBC Africa. Yes. Uh, one of your former players, Kolo Ture, recently took up a job as an assistant coach at uh, Celtic as well as Ivory Coast. He says he wants to do very well in this new role. But were you surprised with his transition into coaching, and what would be your advice to him as he takes up this new uh, career? Well, to keep his enthusiasm, first of all, I would like to congratulate one of my former players who became president of Liberia. Uh, George Weir, and I would like to use that. Uh, you know, it's uh, not often that you have a former player who becomes president of a country. And uh, so, well done, Georgie. And uh, I would say uh, just for him to keep his enthusiasm and his uh, desire to, to learn and uh, to, to win. Nelson, just going back to Christmas Eve, there's, there's been a lot of fan opposition to any game on Christmas Eve. Do you, I mean, as a traditionalist, would you not think we leave Christmas Eve alone? You, you call me a, a traditionalist, <laughs> yes, why not? If it's a good tradition, I don't, I'm always for it, you know, it's a good, personally, I, I would prefer to be uh, at my home on Christmas night and, uh, and celebrate Christmas, but I still feel that could happen if we play early on the day, you know. And uh, what you wouldn't like to sacrifice is uh, the evening with the family, for people. But overall, uh, we go towards a society where religion isn't considered anymore in any decision, and uh, where people want as well to watch football during uh, the Christmas period. Um, and just on, on Sanchez and Ozil and the contract thing again, have you actually set a deadline on those talks? No, so not at the moment. So because there's, there's a sort of suggestion that maybe if you get to January and there's no agreement, you might cut your losses, but could, could you see that happening? Once uh, you're in our kind of situation, you, uh, we have envisaged any, any, every solution, yes. So it is possible they could... It's possible. Okay. Okay, guys. Okay.